All right, welcome back to our second video on probability rules. Uh, this time we're going to go over uh, rules two and three. So the first one we're going to look at is mutually exclusive events. So that sounds sort of complicated, uh, but it just means two events that literally can't occur at the same time. So an example would be getting heads and tails at the same time. So this example down here, uh, or else rolling a dice and getting an odd number and a two at the same time. They're just, they can't happen. So those are kind of silly examples, but the general idea is still correct. So the kind of maths behind this is just saying that the probability of A intersect B or A and B is equal to zero because they can't occur at the same time. So if you were to draw a Venn diagram of this, mutually exclusive events should look like this, A and B. So they are completely exclusive. They can't occur at the same time. So there's no intersect. There should be no little bit in the middle, okay? Um, that's basically it for mutually exclusive events. So the questions they could ask you would be, um, why are those two events mutually exclusive? And you should figure out the probability of A intersect B, whatever the two events are, and if it's equal to zero, then you know that they're mutually exclusive. Um, yeah, or they could ask you just to define it either. So you'd say this definition here with the maths and say the two events that can't occur at the same time, maybe give an example or draw the Venn diagram. So that's really all for rule number two, it's not very heavy, uh, but number three is a little bit more in, so I'll scroll down and have a look at it now. So number three is independent events. So two events are independent if the outcome of one doesn't affect the outcome of another, okay? Uh, and in maths, this means the probability of A intersect B or A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So a question you would probably get asked for this one um, would be prove that two events are independent or investigate if they're independent or some, some form of the question like that. And you need to find P of A intersect B, P of A, and P of B. Uh, and then you need to stick them into this formula, and if it rings true, so if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, then the events are independent. And if they're not, then the events are dependent. So I'll give you some examples. Say, um, let me just get rid of this. So say, example one, um, we'll say a coin toss. So a coin toss is going to be independent because if you flip a coin, so number one, and you get heads, then for number two, so second uh, coin toss, it's still 50-50. It's still half and half is the chance you're going to get heads or tails. Just because you got a heads one time doesn't mean that the probability of getting a heads the next time is lower. It's the same every single time. So these are independent events. Independent. So number one and number two are independent. For example, though, we'll say example two, and I'll use a different color, I'll go orange. Um, we'll say marbles in bag. Um, so the second one, marbles in a bag, there are three red marbles and there are three blue marbles in the bag. Um, so for example, we'll say for event number one, the probability of getting a red marble is half. Then for event number two, this is if you take the marble out and don't replace it, so you take it out, and then you go for a second marble in the bag, then the probability of getting a red marble is two over five. So the probability has, for event number two, um, the probability has changed, and that means it's dependent. So this is a dependent event. Um, so if you wanted to actually work it out, you could stick it into um, this formula here. It doesn't, it doesn't really make sense in this example here, but the idea still makes sense that if the events are independent, the probability won't change, and if they're um, dependent, then it will change. These events aren't independent of each other. But we will look at an example now um, that will have to use this formula here to prove that events are dependent or independent. So I will go across and set that up now. So here's our example over here. Uh, I'll just read through it quickly. So there are 30 people in the class, it says. Uh, the probability of A is 0 0.4, and that's the probability that somebody studies physics. The probability of B is 0 0.3, and that's the probability that someone studies religion. And the number of people who study physics and religion is three. Okay, so the number of people in the class who study both. Is studying physics and studying religion independent? So that's what the question is asking us. So we'll start with the uh, rule for independence, P of A and B is equal to P of A times P of B, okay? So this has to be true uh, if the events are independent. So first thing I'll do is I'll find P of A and B, 
So that's going to be the number of people who do A and B divided by the total number, um, which is going to be three people over 30 people. So I will stick that in. That's going to be three over 30 or 0 0.1. Let me see if that one's the calculator. Uh, P of A and P of B are given up here in the question. Um, so we don't need to write those out again. So now all we need to do is stick it into the formula and see if it works out. So I'll go green for this. I'll scroll down a little bit. So we will see that P of A and B is equal to 0 0.1 and then equals to P of A, which is 0 0.4 times 0 0.3. If we go down the next step, we'll see that 0 0.1 is equal to 0 0.12. And this isn't true. It's not true. So that means they are not independent. So if it were true, then they would be independent. Independent. So they're not independent because this is not true. So that's that's basically how you figure it out. You put find, figure out P of A and B, P of A, and then P of B, stick it into the formula and see if one side equals the other side. So in this case, they're not independent. If you study physics, um, that'll affect the probability that you study religion, okay? And that might sort of hold true in real life as well, that someone who studies physics is probably less likely to study religion and vice versa. Um, that's a big generalization. But anyway, those are the other two probability rules. Um, so now we only have one left. So we looked at mutually exclusive events. So again, you need to know the kind of match definition, what it means, and then maybe a Venn diagram and an example or two. Independent events. So you need to know the definition, the independent of one outcome of one doesn't affect the outcome of another. Uh, the match definition, and then maybe some examples, and then how to use it in a, in a question like we showed over here in example three. So yeah, that's all for this video. In the next video, we will look at conditional probabilities. So we'll see you then. Uh, if you like the videos, don't forget to like and subscribe, etc.